Now we will start second chapter acids, bases and salt. You have studied in the previous classes about the food which are sour and bitter in taste and you know it very well why are, are the some of the food sour or bitter in taste. This is due to the acids and bases present in the food. So, let us uh, study some, some more about acids, bases and salts, their chemical properties. Suppose someone in your family suffers from acidity. Now, what do you suggest to remove this acidity? Suppose you have lemon juice, vinegar and baking so soda solution. Would you like to remove acidity by lemon juice or vinegar? or baking soda solution, what will be your answer? The remedy for acidity will be of course, baking soda solution. So, acidity can be removed only by baking soda solution because vinegar as well as lemon juice are acidic in nature and cannot be used as a remedy for acidity. Now, how can we test acids and bases? With the help of indicators, with the help of certain substances which can tell whether the solution is acidic or basic in nature. And indicators, also you have studied some of the indicators in the previous classes. There are two types of indicators, natural indicators and synthetic indicators. One very famously very commonly used indicator, natural indicator is litmus, which is obtained from lichen. It is a purple colored dye. So, natural indicator is litmus, which is a purple colored dye and it is obtained from lichen. Now, litmus can be used as litmus paper or litmus solution in two forms. Let us take blue litmus paper and red litmus paper. Now, if you put blue litmus paper in a test tube containing acid, what will happen? The color will change to red. if this is acid and this is the blue colored litmus paper, blue litmus changes to red. So, we can test whether the given solution is acid or basis. In the second test tube take any base like acid can be HCl as base can be NaOH solution in water and here dip in it a red litmus paper. What will be the change in the color? The color of red litmus paper changes to blue, red litmus changes to blue. Now, suppose you put this red litmus paper as well as the blue litmus paper in distilled water and observe the change in color. Will there be a change? No, there would not be any change as you know. Why? Think about it. Because distilled water is neutral, it will neither change the color of red litmus paper nor it will change the color of blue litmus paper. So, one of the indicator is litmus, which very widely used, very commonly used in the lab. There are so many other natural indicators also like turmeric. Now, turmeric powder is used for cooking the food and you have must have observed that if it falls on the clothes, it leaves a yellow colored stain. On washing the clothes, what happens? The stain changes to 
pink color. Soap solution is a basic solution and it changes into pink on coming in contact with turmeric solution. So, turmeric is also a natural indicator and it changes to uh, basis to pink in color right and no change in color in the acids. Some more natural indicators can be prepared from red cabbage leaves or colored petals of certain plants like hydrangea, geranium and petunia. So, these some indicators can be extracted from these plants right. Now, as I told you the second type of indicators are synthetic indicators and you might have heard about these synthetic indicators these are phenophthalene and methyl orange. Phenophthalene is used as indicator very widely in the lab. Now, if you take 3 test tubes in one test tube put dilute HCl in other test tube put some NaOH solution and in third test tube distilled water and put a drop of phenophthalene in all these three test tubes and see the changes what do you observe. So, one drop of phenophthalene in all the test tubes. In the case of dilute HCl you find that there is no change in color. In the case of dilute NaOH solution you will find a change in color it changes to pink color. So, it becomes pink. In the case of distilled water what do you find? In this case also there is no change in color, no change because distilled water is neutral. Now, methyl orange is another indicator, it also is an acid base indicator used to indicate the presence of acids and bases. And see the effect of methyl orange on acids and bases by performing an activity as you performed in the case of phenophthalene. You will find that methyl orange when it is put in acids, acids methyl orange originally is orange in color, acids turn red in with methyl orange right. Where is there is no change in color when a drop of methyl orange is added to NaOH solution. So, in NaOH solution there is no change in color. In basis no change in color. Now, suppose you are given a red litmus solution and you have to test the presence of or uh, uh, acids, bases and distilled water with the help of red litmus solution or red, red litmus paper. How will you test? Think about it. Only red litmus paper you have and you have to test the presence of both acids and bases and distilled water. Now, as you know bases turn red litmus paper to blue in color. Put this red litmus paper in the base, it will become blue in color. Now, use this blue litmus paper, take it out and now after washing with distilled water, put it in the acid. It will turn red in color, 
it will tell the solution is acid. Now, if you put this litmus paper in distilled water, there will be no change in color. So, by red litmus solution or red litmus paper, you can easily differentiate between acid, base and distilled water. Change when methyl orange is added, it will change to red in color. Same observation will be seen with by all the other acids, same observation because all are acids. Same activity can be performed with all these bases, what will you find? You can easily tell, you can easily fill the table even without performing the experiment, but you perform the experiment, you will see yourself the following changes do occur. In the case of red litmus solution, when it is added a few drops to any of these bases, it will turn blue in color and the same change will be observed in all the cases. Now, similarly, when blue litmus solution is added to bases, as you know, there is no change in color. So, it will remain blue only and same observation will be observed in all the cases. In the case of bases, when a drop of phenolphthalein is added, what change do you find? You will find that it changes to pink color and same change is observed in all the other bases. Now, what happens when a drop of methyl orange is added to any of these bases? As you know very well, there is no change in color. So, what is the original color of methyl orange? It is little bit change only to yellow, but it does not, uh, it does not change to red. So, it, we can differentiate it from acid that it is a base. So, like this by the using all these indicators, we can differentiate whether the given sample is an acid or a base or a neutral solution like distilled water. Now, we will study another type of indicators. These are all factory indicators. Now, these indicators also can be used whether the given sample is acid or a base. In this case, the odor changes, the smell changes in acid or base. Now, for knowing in detail about the olfactory indicators, we can perform a very simple activity at home even. Now, what is that activity? Take some chopped uh, onions and put it in a plastic bag and also put some thin strips of cloth, clean strips of cloth inside the packet and then put it in the refrigerator for the whole night. Next day when you take it out, take out the cloth strips, what do you observe? Well, you will find that when you smell the cloth strips, it smells of onion. Now, take out these cloth strips and place it on the table and on e uh, take two strips and on each strip put a drop of dilute HCl on one cloth strip and a drop of NaOH solution on the other cloth strip. Of course, not a drop, a little more solution on both the of HCl as well as NaOH on both the strips. Now, wash both the cloth strips with water and now smell, what do you find? You find after rinsing with water and do you smell it again, you will find that there is no order of onion on the cloth strip having dilute NaOH on it. Dilute NaOH has removed the smell of onion, whereas the other strip on which dilute HCl was poured, it still smells of onion. So, we can indicate whether the given sample is a base or an acid on the basis of the change in order. Order can change. Similarly, other olfactory indicators are vanilla essence and clovial. Vanilla essence also is an olfactory indicator. It can also be used to indicate acids and bases. A experiment can be performed in uh, two test tubes containing 
dilute HCl in one test tube and dilute NOH in another test tube. To both the uh, test tubes, a drop of vanilla essence is added. You all know vanilla essence has a peculiar smell. Now smell both the test tubes. What do you observe? You will find that the test tube in which dilute NOH has been taken does not smell of vanilla. So base can be detected by vanilla essence. Whereas the test tube which contains dilute HCl, it still smells of vanilla. So we can also indicate acids and bases by using these olfactory indicators. Now we will study some chemical properties of acids and bases. First of all, we will study how do acids and bases react with metals. To study the reaction between acids and metals, let us discuss about an activity which can be performed in the lab. Apparatus is fitted according to the diagram as like this. A test tube is taken in which zinc granules and sulfuric acid are taken and it is fitted with the help of a clamp stand. The test tube is fitted with a rubber stopper through which passes a delivery tube. The other end of the delivery tube dipped in water which is contained in a glass trough. Now as soon as zinc granules are mixed with sulfuric acid dilute, a chemical reaction occurs and some gas bubbles are seen rising up. Now let us think what are these gas bubbles. These gas bubbles which rise up, this gas passes through the delivery tube and passes through this solution. Now this solution some soap is also mixed. So this is soap solution in fact, soap solution. Now what happens? This gas then goes out in the form of soap bubbles. Now let us test which gas is this. This gas can be tested by bringing a burning candle in front of this soap bubbles. It is observed that the gas burns with a pop sound. What does it show? That this gas produced is hydrogen gas. So what do we conclude? That zinc reacts with sulfuric acid and forms hydrogen gas. Let us write the chemical equation. The chemical equation, the chemical reaction which has occurred that zinc has reacted with sulfuric acid and formed zinc sulphate and hydrogen gas. All, most of the metals, all the metals in fact react with all the acids and form salt and hydrogen gas. So in general we can write the chemical uh, equation as this, in, this is a general equation like metal plus acid will form salt and hydrogen gas. Even if we take hydrochloric acid in place of sulfuric acid, in that case also hydrogen gas will be liberated and a salt will be formed. Or any other metal is taken, in that case also hydrogen gas will be liberated and a salt will be formed. So this is a property of most of the metals. The same activity can be performed by taking a base and a metal and using same type of apparatus. Same type of apparatus is fitted in the lab and instead of acid and a metal, a base and a metal is taken and in place of zinc and sulfuric acid what is taken? Zinc and sodium hydroxide is taken. Now sodium hydroxide and zinc react and gas bubbles are formed. Gas goes through the delivery tube into the soap solution which is contained in a trough and rises in the form of soap bubbles and when these soap bubbles are tested by bringing a burning candle as in the previous case the gas burns with a pop sound. 
what does it prove that metals on reacting with the base also produce hydrogen gas so let us see what type of reaction has occurred zinc has reacted with sodium hydroxide and formed na2zno2 sodium zincate and hydrogen so in this case also a general equation can be written like bases plus metals form salt and hydrogen but in this particular case all metals do not react with the bases all metals do not react with the bases to produce salt and hydrogen gas some of the metals react and some of the metals do not react how do metal carbonates and metal hydrogen carbonates react with acids for this let us first of all discuss about an activity to be performed in the lab take a test tube and add sodium carbonate to it and then add dilute hcl fit the apparatus as shown in the diagram this is a thistle funnel by this thistle funnel dilute hcl can be added after the cork has been fitted so that dilute hcl reacts with sodium carbonate and the gas formed rises up the delivery tube into the test tube which is filled with a solution of calcium hydroxide the solution of calcium hydroxide in water is called lime water now when the gas is passed over lime water what do you observe you will find that milkiness appears this milkiness is due to the formation of an insoluble substance that is calcium carbonate so let us first see what happens when sodium carbonate reacts with dilute hcl na2co3 reacts with hcl to form nacl carbon dioxide and water and when carbon dioxide is passed through lime water an insoluble salt forms that is calcium carbonate due to which milkiness appears also when carbon dioxide gas is passed through lime water for a long time the milkiness disappears why let us see how you might might be knowing some of you might be knowing that milkiness disappears due to the formation of a soluble compound that is calcium bicarbonate according to this equation CaCO3 plus H2O plus CO2 forms CaHCO3 whole twice if the same experiment is performed by taking sodium hydrogen carbonate that is NaHCO3 in place of Na2CO3 and dilute HCl is added with the help of the thistle funnel the gas evolves which is again passed through the delivery tube into the lime water and in the same manner as in the previous activity lime water turns milky so again carbon dioxide gas evolves and reacts with lime water and milkiness appears due to the formation of insoluble salt that is calcium carbonate the equation can be seen to study the reaction taking place nahco3 reacts with hcl and forms nacl plus co2 plus h2o so we can see from this that both metal carbonates as well as metal hydrogen carbonates react with dilute hcl to produce carbon dioxide gas a salt is formed and water is also formed so both react in the same manner we can write a general chemical equation like this metal carbonate or metal hydrogen carbonate plus acid forms salt plus carbon dioxide plus water also one thing you should know that caco3 is calcium carbonate and limestone chalk 
and marble and eggshell also are all different forms of CaCO3. Even eggshell is made up of calcium carbonate. Next property is how do acids and bases react with each other? For this let us first of all discuss about an activity which can be performed in the lab. Take a test tube and add to it about 2 ml of NaOH solution prepared in water that is the aqueous solution of NaOH. Now add to it a one drop of phenolphthalein. What do you observe? You will find that the color of the solution becomes pink. Now add dilute HCl slowly. As you add dilute HCl, you will see that color will fade for some time and again reappear. But a stage comes when the color of the solution disappears. Pink color disappears and the solution becomes colorless. At this stage, add one more drop of NaOH and see the change in color. One drop, two drop, three drop and what will happen after some time? The pink color reappears. It shows that the acid and base react and nullify the effect of each other. And this type of reaction is called neutralization reaction. Now let us see what happens when acid reacts with a base. Acid on reacting with the base forms salt and water. Let us see in this particular case what happens. How does NaOH react with HCl? NaOH plus HCl forms NaCl which is a salt and water. So a neutralization reaction is a chemical reaction in which acid reacts with the base to form salt and water. Now as you know the acids and base nullify the effect of each other. At home if somebody at home or anywhere else if somebody suffers from acidity what remedy you will suggest? You will suggest a base to remove the acidity. You will not suggest any acid to remove the acidity but a base to remove the acidity and that base easily can be used is baking soda solution which nullifies the effect of the acid produced in the stomach. Another uh, property we can discuss is the reaction of metallic oxides with acids. To discuss this property in activity first of all will be discussed take a metallic oxide in a test tube. Let us take cupric oxide which is black in color. Now to this test tube add some amount of dilute HCl. What do you see? You will find a change in the color. The color of the solution changes to blue green due to the formation of a new substance cupric chloride. Let us see the chemical equation now. Black colored cupric oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid and forms cupric chloride and water. Now you can see very well here that bases also react with the acids to form salt and water and in the same way metallic oxides also react with acids to form salt and water. So metallic oxides are basic in nature and metallic oxides are also called basic oxides. Next, next property which we will discuss is reaction between non-metallic oxide and base. Now non-metallic oxide is the compound of a non-metal with oxygen like carbon dioxide. This we have already seen that when carbon dioxide gas is passed through lime water which is a base that is calcium hydroxide solution in water it turns milky due to the formation of a substance insoluble salt that is calcium carbonate and water is also formed. We can see this 
carbon dioxide gas reacts with calcium hydroxide and turns the solution milky due to the formation of insoluble salt calcium carbonate and water. Just like when acids react with bases, what is formed? Salt and water. In the same manner, non-metallic oxides react with the base and form salt and water. So, non-metallic oxides are behaving like acids. Non-metallic oxides are acidic in nature. That is why non-metallic oxides are also called acidic oxides. Now, next we will study about what do all acids and bases have in common? What is common between them? For this, an activity can be performed by taking a beaker in which a rubber cork is placed and over it, it two nails are fixed which are connected to a 6 volt battery with the help of conducting wires and in the circuit a bulb is also linked, is attached. Now when and this beaker is filled with dilute HCl and when the current is allowed to pass through the circuit, it is found that the bulb glows. What does it show? That dilute HCl is an electrolyte, it allows the current to pass through it. The same experiment if it is performed by taking dilute H2SO4 in place of dilute HCl, it is found that the bulb glows in this case also. That is dilute sulfuric acid is also a good conductor of electricity. How does the current flow? The current flow through the circuit with the help of ions. Ions are present with, uh, in the solution of acid in water. Same experiment if it is performed with a base like sodium hydroxide solution in water. In that case also what happens? The bulb glows showing again that sodium hydroxide solution in, uh, ions are present due to which current is passed through the circuit in with the help of ions. Repeat the experiment with glucose solution, alcohol solution. It is observed in those cases the bulb does not glow in the case of alcohol in water and glucose in water. Showing thereby that glucose solution and alcohol solution are not good conductors of electricity because they are not present in the form of ions. So, what is common? That is what we are going to discuss that acids and bases they are present in the form of ions the, due to which the current can pass through it. They allow the current to pass through it. it. Another property we will discuss what happens to an acid or base in a water solution when acid is mixed with water or a base is mixed with water, what happens? For this an activity can be performed in the lab by taking a test tube in which sodium chloride salt that is common salt is taken and to it is added dilute sulfuric acid. The reaction will occur according to this equation and HCl gas is evolved. The reaction occurs, salt is formed and hydrochloric, hydrogen chloride gas is formed. Now, if this gas is allowed to pass over blue litmus paper which is dry, the thing to be noted is the blue litmus paper is dry. It does not change in color, there is no change in color. Now, in place of bringing a blue litmus paper which is dry, it is wetted in water and a wet blue litmus paper is now brought near the mouth of the test tube. The HCl gas which is liberated now will turn blue litmus to red in color. What does it show? That when HCl is dissolved in water, it forms ions and then only it can turn blue litmus to red in color. 
HCl when it comes in contact with water it forms ions H3O plus and chloride ions H3O plus ions are called hydronium ions what are these called hydronium ions hydrogen ions cannot exist alone it always combines with water and forms hydronium ions in the same manner when sodium hydroxide or any other base is dissolved in water it also forms ions like this NaOH when it is dissolved in water it forms sodium ions and hydroxide ions in the same manner another base potassium hydroxide dissolved in water also dissociates into ions potassium ions K plus and hydroxide ions OH minus similarly magnesium hydroxide also dissolves when uh, also when dissolved in water dissociates into magnesium ions and hydroxide ions now when acid and base react salt and water are formed suppose this is a general acid HX and a general base MOH it forms salt MX and water acids give hydrogen ions and bases give hydroxide ions so what is neutralization reaction actually it is the combination of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions hydrogen ions react with hydroxide ions and form water so neutralization reaction is in fact a reaction between hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions now let us discuss about what are concentrated acids and what are dilute acids concentrated acids have concentration of ions more per unit volume and when it is mixed with water the concentration of the ions per unit volume will decrease now for this let us uh, discuss first of all an activity take about 5 ml of distilled water and to it add a few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid and touch the test tube what do you find the test tube has become hot it is an exothermic reaction the mixing of distilled water to the concentrated acid is known as dilution and the acid is said to be diluted so dilute acid is the that acid in which the concentration of ions per unit volume is decreases it becomes less now care must be taken that acid should be added to distilled water now suppose if reverse is uh, practiced if instead of adding acid to water water is added to acid it will cause the acid to splash out and it may cause burns so care has to be taken because of the production of heat the glass container also may break and it may cause some accidents it may cause harm it may burn a person who is uh, doing the work in the lab also if you dissolve sodium hydroxide crystals pallets in the form of pallets it is available dissolve it in distilled water and touch the test tube test tube again becomes hot heat is liberated and a solution forms if a concentrated solution is made it means it has more sodium hydroxide ions sodium hydroxide dissolved in water per unit so number of ions per unit volume will be more in concentrated solution and number of ions per unit volume in a dilute solution will be less so same is the case with the concentrated and dilute bases now at also many a times we will be using the terms organic acids and mineral acids organic acids are those acids which are obtained from plants and animals like citric acid tartaric acid these are the acids obtained from the plants and the mineral acids are those acids which are obtained from the earth like hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid and nitric acid these are very strong acids strong acids 
and these are weak acids. Now, we will discuss also what are strong acids and what are, what are weak acids. Uh, why, why do we call them strong acids and why do we call organic acids as weak acids? Also, you know about the corrosive nature of acids and bases. If concentrated sulfuric acid or concentrated hydrochloric acid falls on a piece of wood or cloth, it may damage them. It may produce a hole in the cloth, it may damage the wood and if it falls on the hand, the hand will burn. So, same case will happen with the bases also if they are concentrated they will cause damage to the skin, to the cloth and so on. So, acids and bases if they are concentrated should be handled with care because they cause damage, they are corrosive in nature. Many times we will use this term strong and weak acids. Now, as you know as acids form ions when dissolved in water. Strong acids are those which are completely ionized when dissolved in water and weak acids are those which are weakly or partially ionized when dissolved in water like acetic acid. Acetic acid is a weak acid. In the same manner strong bases are those which are completely ionized in water like sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide and weak bases are those which are partially ionized when dissolved in water like ammonium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide these are the weak bases which are partially ionized in water. Now, there is, there is a term alkalis. All the bases do not dissolve in water. Those bases which dissolve in water they are called alkalis. But many places alkalis or bases will be used. Of course, it means if even if we use alkalis or we use bases, it means the bases only, which are basic in nature, which uh, produce hydro hydroxide ions while reacting. Now, we will discuss how to find out the strength of acid and base solutions. How do we find whether the particular acid is a strong acid or a strong base? Can we measure hydrogen ion concentration quantitatively? Acids give hydrogen ions, bases give hydroxide ions. Whether the hydrogen concentration can be measured? It can be measured with the help of a pH scale. pH, P stands for potens in German. By using universal indicator which is a mixture of several indicators and using pH. First of all, you should know what is pH. If scale has been uh, made pH scale for measuring hydrogen ion concentration, a pH scale has been made. pH is inversely proportional to hydrogen ion concentration. So, if hydrogen ion concentration is more as may be in the case of acids, this condition may arise, its pH will be less. And when hydrogen ion concentration decreases in a basic solution, hydroxide ion concentration will be more and hydrogen ion concentration will decrease. Now, in that case pH will be higher. A scale has been made. If the pH value, this is these are all pH value, the scale has been made from 0 to 14. The pH between 0 to 7 indicates the acidic nature of the solution. Now, if a pH of a particular solution is 0, it means it is strongly acidic and H as pH increases, the acidic nature decreases, hydrogen ion concentration decreases. 7, if pH is 7, pH will be 7 for distilled water, it means the solution is neutral, it does not have hydrogen ions. And if pH increases, hydrogen ion concentration decreases. At P 
pH from 7 to 14 indicates the basic nature of the solution. So, on this scale we can find out whether a particular solution is acidic or basic, whether it is strongly acidic or weakly uh, acidic, it is a concentrated solution or a dilute solution. So, pH it will measure, it will measure because if it is concentrated hydrogen ion concentration will be more, if it is dilute hydrogen ion concentration will be less. Now, as I told you ri right now a pH scale is used here and to measure the pH an indicator is used that is universal indicator, it is a mixture of several indicators. Just like litmus solution as we use a litmus solution also and uh, paper also same way here universal indicator solution is used or universal indicator paper is used. And different acids at different hydrogen ion concentration give different color with universal indicator paper which can be then compared with standard pH color chart and the pH of the solution can be found. So, what should be done? A solution is taken and universal indicator paper is dipped in that solution. A, what will happen? The color will be developed on the paper, color will change in the paper, it will be compared with this chart and the pH can be found. So, these numbers indicate the pH values. So, these are all pH by matching the color pH can be found. For some it is written if pH is 0 it will be dark red, if pH is 4 it will be orange, if pH is 7 it will become green, if pH is 14 it will become violet. It, you need not to remember this different colors for different pH. You will just see what change has occurred, just compare it with this standard pH color chart and find out the pH of the solution. So, pH will give you the acidic nature of the solution, how much hydrogen ions are present in the solution, whether it is a concentrated solution or a dilute solution, we can find out by the help of this universal indicator paper and the pH scale and this standard pH color chart used in the lab, we can find out the pH of the given solution.